If you have your Bibles, open up to the book of Genesis, and we're going to continue moving through. We have actually been moving through the uh, study in the life of Joseph. Today we'll do a little bit more of that uh, as we continue. We learned about Jacob. Uh, basically, Jacob was, you know, Joseph's father. And certain things took place with Jacob. You know that uh, Joseph was the youngest of uh, 11 other brothers. And what ended up happening was his 11 other brothers schemed a plan against him. Uh, if you don't remember, you weren't here for the last two weeks before, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, the brothers began to scheme against him and began to work out a plan. And they said, look, our dad loves this little guy because he's the youngest one. He gets all the special treatment. He does this and he does that and dad always talks about him. I'm a little bit sick of my little brother. And all 11 of these guys got together and said, look, we got to come up with a plan. What are we going to do? And a few of them said, no, we can't do this. The other said, no, let's kill him. No, can't kill him. Let's do something. we got to do something. They said, here's what we'll do. We'll throw him in a pit. We'll throw him in a hole. We'll sell him as a slave. And that way, the bad people will come through town, pick him up, take him with them. And then Joseph will have to live his life with them. And we won't have to worry about him anymore. Because they'll have taken him to be a slave. And we'll live great from that moment on. Well, let me tell you what happened. Joseph did go to that hole. He was placed inside there and he was left by himself in a well. And can you imagine being a, a young cat like this guy, stuck in a hole, uh, not knowing where his life was going to go, where his plans were going to go, all these wonderful things that he wanted to do, the inheritance of his father, the land his father had for him, all the things that were great in his life, all of a sudden, in just a few seconds of being put in a pit, he thinks, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And let me, I don't know about you, but how many have ever been in a situation where you find yourself in a certain circumstance and you begin to lose faith yourself? You begin to wonder, is this going to work? Is my life going to turn out like it's supposed to? Where is God when I'm in a hole? Where is He at? Is He helping me? I, I'm in trouble. What, what's going to happen here? Because I'm not seeing it. Right now I'm in this hole and I'm not seeing it. Now He didn't complain. Nowhere in Joseph's life do you find that he complained. He stayed quiet. He trusted God. He watched what God was going to do. All right, And he watched God lead him and guide him. Even to the point where, listen to what happens. Later on, there's a famine in the land where his brothers live. And Joseph is off in Egypt. He started as a slave. If you don't know the story, I'll tell you a couple quick things so that you'll know what his life was like. He started out working as a slave, scrubbing floors, cleaning bathrooms. Yeah, cleaning bathrooms. He had to do all the most horrible things in the kingdom, right? Because this is what they gave him to do, right? Because his family wasn't around. Nobody cared about him and nobody was helping him. He had to do all these terrible jobs. But he was faithful in his jobs. And the people who employed him, Solomon said, look, this guy, he, he did more than he should have. And when he asked him to clean the floor, he did the floor, but he didn't just do it regular. He did it unto the Lord. And it's blessed. And look how nice that looks. And man, everything Joseph t touches is good. You need to get this guy and hire him. You need to keep him around. Give him more responsibility. Well, they gave him so much responsibility. And everything his hand touched was so blessed. Listen to this. That the Egyptians made him number two only under the Pharaoh. Which means he was the Pharaoh's financial advisor, slash accountant, slash all of that other stuff. Now, can you imagine that? Picture this for a second. You were thrown in a well and you were hopeless. Your brothers, the very people who love you, your own family members, they abandoned you. Now look at his life. Even the people who aren't even related to you are smiling on you because you're doing everything well. God is blessing you. He's number two in charge. Well, let me tell you what happens. His 11 brothers and their families, they start starving. Because that's what was happening. a famine. You know what a famine is? That means you go to the cupboard and you open it up, ain't nothing there. All right? And you are hungry. And you're thinking, man, where's my food going to come from? And, the, and, and, and there's no crops in the field. And nothing's coming in. And there's a drought. And what's going to happen? And no one knows where their next meal is going to come from. Well, they travel to Egypt to get help. Guess who they find when they get to Egypt? Joseph had had a dream. And he had put away a percentage of all the grain, expecting there to be a drought because God had showed it to him. And, he, and guess what? Here they show up in the town. And they show up into Egypt and they go get food like Jacob, their father, had told them to do. And they don't know it, but their little brother, the one they threw out, is the one who's blessing them and giving them food. And they have no idea. Well, that's where it brings us in the story. Jacob is, is, is uh, it finds out that his son is still alive. They have to go back to their dad and say, Dad, listen, remember we told you the story about Joseph that 
You know, he was really thrown in the well, and now he's a ruler in Egypt, and we all have food. Listen, Dad, we need to travel to go see Joseph because he's blessing us with grain and all the things that we need. And he says there's a land there for our families called Goshen, and we all can live there forever. We can be happy. We can be blessed. We can have those things. Let's move to that land. And so all of a sudden, Jacob takes his family, and then they all get together, and they travel back to Egypt to pick up food. And they said, well, here's the place where you're going to live. And Joseph said, hey, this is my mom and pops, Mr. Pharaoh. This is my mom and pops. And this, these are my brothers. And Pharaoh says, you know what? Y'all get the best land. Take care of them. Take them out there. Give them the best place. Take care of them and give them all the things that they need. Can I tell you something? That is the heart of God this morning. You need to see it. The heart of God is to give you every single thing you need and, and more all the things that you want. If you read the Bible, the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart. What are your, what are your heart desires? What are the things that you want to see God do in your life? God's going to be faithful to that. You know why? Because He loves you and you're a son and you're a child. And, and hey, how much do you love your child? How much do we love our kids? Do we not want to bless them and give them the best? Well, what do you think the heart of God is? He's looking down from heaven right now and He's looking at your life and He's looking at the things that you want and the things that you need and no one in this world Nobody, I don't care who they are, cares for you like Jesus. And nobody, no matter who they are, wants to give you all the wonderful things from heaven like God does. And that's what He wants to do for you this morning. So that takes us to where we're at in the story. If you missed the last few weeks, that tells you a little bit. Here's what I want you to have. We're going to put down our first point and get going. Here's what I want you to have. Joseph trusted the call of God. Joseph trusted the call of God. You know, you're going to have to get out and say, you know what, I, first of all, I trust your name, God. Everything you do, whether it's in the well or whether it's in prison, it wrongly or whatever I have faced, whatever I've gone through, God, I know that you're taking care of me. I trust you. You have to do that. If you can't get to that point, you're, you're in trouble. You've got to get to that point. When you begin to learn to trust God, guess what? You don't worry about your bills, do you? Huh? God's going to take care of me. I mean, in the back of our minds, we're like, oh, what's going to happen? But then we say, look, God's in charge. Huh? We know he's sovereign. What's going to happen in each of the situations? What's going to happen with our family? Now, Joseph had family problems. They threw him in a well. They tried to kill him. But let's be realistic. Just this week, we went to Burger King to eat. And one of my son's friends told my son that his family was having trouble. That their mom and dad was, was either going to split up or about to split up. And there were big time problems at home. You know, my heart was broken. Because I know that kid. And that kid's father's always blessing me. He owns a nice sized business in Black, and he always blesses me. My heart's broken. They're about to split up. You know who gets hurt? Mom and dad most certainly spend a lot of their time lonely and hurting, even after the divorce. There's no doubt about it. But what about the kids? What a terrible situation. You see that Satan, that's what he does. That's what he did in Joseph's home. He tried to begin to separate the brothers, didn't he? See, if he can just pry them apart, and the farther he can get them apart from each other, the more he can begin to work and hurt them and, and, and not be able to. Let me tell you something. You need to know this. You are only as strong as you are close to your family. My father taught me that a long time ago. He, he, he went out in the yard and he grabbed some sticks. And I've told you this story before. He grabbed some sticks and, and, and he put the sticks together. And he showed me some one stick breaks easily. He said, get a few sticks in your hand. He said, I'm trying to stick sticks. And it's real, man. It's real. It's true. The people that you have around you. Send me some instruments. Marcus, I don't have any family around you. Can I tell you? Look around you right now. Look around you right now. There's people here who will be your family. There are people here that will love you. There are people here who will be there in those moments when you need them. You do not have to live alone like a dry twig out there in life, man. You don't have to live like that. There are people here who want to help you, to bless you, and they want to love you with the love of God. They want you to, to, to be like those that, that security that when those sticks come together, look, there's strength in numbers. We're united. I'm going to tell you, look around you. I'm going to tell you this. I, can, I know who these people are all around you. Everyone in this church doesn't have everything, do they? We're not rich. I mean, we're not, we're not this, we're not that, but I'll tell you what we are. We're united and we love people. And we love in the name of Jesus. And that, that's what God is doing in the midst of our congregation. Right. So what I want you to know is even though Joseph was trusting God's call, he was trusting what God was doing, he knew God was in control. There was a sense of God is sovereign and God is in control. And God will bring about the blessings in my life. I know that. Why? One, because I love Him. Uh, Romans 8.28 says, All things work together for good for those who love God and are but called according to His purpose. You know what that passage means? Basically this. Those of you who love God 
and you are called according to his purpose. I'm going to tell you this. The fact that you are called, you need to hear this, according to his purpose, I can prove to you that you're called according to his purpose. But why? Why are you alive right now? Why hasn't God taken you out? Because he's got a plan. There's something about you. See, why were you created? Why are you here on the earth? Why did he make you? I'll tell you why. He had a wonderful plan prepared for you. He was going to guide you. He was going to direct you. And he was going to bring you through. If you don't see that, then you're blind to the reality that you're in this world, that God has placed you here, that he has made you, that he has created you, and he's going to bring about a plan in your life. You've got to lean on that. Hey, listen, I'm going to make mistakes. I make them every day. My wife can tell you. All right? She can write a book with my mistakes. But here's the beautiful thing. Listen, God has a plan. And despite my mistakes, who's God? He's still faithful, isn't he? Despite the times I mess up, He's still faithful and keeps me together. And the Word says all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. That tells me that everything in my life, whether it seems good or bad, throw me in a well, throw me in the dirt, uh, have me in a land with no one, and I don't know where it's going to happen or where it's going to come from, have my people mistreat me. I know one thing for sure. There is a God in heaven who loves me, who created me with a purpose. He has a plan. He will not leave me undone. He will come and rescue me. And my biggest moment of need, he will sweep me up from that pit. And I can tell you this, people, he did not create me to be the bottom of the slum of the street. He created me to be his child. And where do you want your kid to live when he's older? Amen? Amen. Where does a father want his child to be? How does he want his child? Can I tell you that is the same way and the same heart that God has for you this morning? He is going to work out everything you're facing, everything you're going through, because you are called according to His purpose. He will not leave you. He's not going to leave you or forsake you. You need to understand that this morning. We are called. We are the people of God. We are created with a purpose. If you have your Bibles, Genesis 45, Genesis 45, 4 through 7. And I'm going to be moving quick. I, I had to read about four chapters to summarize this, to get us to where we're going. Um, I can tell you this. What do you remember when you, mess, when you mentioned Joseph in your mind? What do you think? What comes to your mind? Anybody? Come on, Joseph. What do you think? Coat. Okay, he had a beautiful coat that his father had given him. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. You think about Joseph was faithful. Anybody else? What do you think when you think about Joseph? Honest. Merciful. Merciful? No doubt, man. His own brothers needed food. He blessed his brothers, the ones who threw him in a pit. Tell me he wasn't merciful. Good job, Josh. Anybody else? Forgiving. Forgiving, no doubt, man. You worked through that. And you know what? Here's the deal. If you've got stuff you're holding against people in the past and you haven't gotten past it, guess what? They don't have a problem. You do. you got to get past that, man. So you can live according to the way God wants you to live. Go ahead. Anybody else? What do you think about Joseph? What was his legacy? Anybody? Love. Love. No doubt, man. Love. There's a message that comes through in his life. Anybody else? Faith. Faith. Trust in God. Faith in God. Excellent. Anybody?